hello, hello. Welcome back to the Spirit of Watercolor with Linda. Glad you're joining me again. We are almost to the, um, this coming weekend will be Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, so I've been here pondering after getting some videos out about holiday cards and winter scenes that we've been working on. I'm like pondering what to paint this week and, um, and what things to talk about I'll be busy like a lot of people with the holidays, so um, I was thinking that maybe none of us are going to want to labor into a painting that's a lot of effort and work right now, um, but what I would like to do is maybe help you to finish up the ones we've been doing to make them look better, and I'll tell you what the problem I've been having is. Even though sometimes I may wet the paper and flatten it and stretch it, it still has some wave in the paper. So what I want to do is, here, let me grab two paintings for you and um, that we just were working on. And my problem is I like the paintings a lot, but the waves, I don't know, I think you can see the waviness of that paper. It's like kind of doing this wave. Um, and sometimes that still happens, even though you have stretched paper. If you super stretch it, which I don't tend to do anymore, I used to, um, it may not happen, but then you it pulls so tight sometimes that you get the staples get pulled and you get holes. And I don't care for the holes in the, uh, the outside of the paper. I like the tape marks for the edge. But what I want to show you today is we're going to go to the table and we're going to iron our paintings. Okay, uh, unbelievably you can iron your paintings, but there's a, a way to do it. So I'll show you what supplies you need beside the iron, <laughs> just a regular iron, which hopefully every home still has. I know a lot of people use permanent press, so irons aren't as used. They may be less popular, but I think most homes still have one and you can get one for not very expensive. It's something that I do keep in my studio. And so we will, um, we will take these paintings this week and we will flatten them to a super flat, ready to mat and frame uh, finished look. Um, so I have two here of which we will work on, the two from our last video about backwashing. So check that out if you want to see how did we get these wonderful um, loose trees happening and so forth in there. Um, and, and, and this one too. And so, um, but I want to take these to a better um, finishing point to actually mat and frame. And that will be our um, exciting video for today. If you like this Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned. This won't be long, but you will see how the process of getting these um, super flat. Okay, see you at the table. Okay, we're back at the table, and here's the two paintings. And if I hold it like this, you can probably see the waves I'm talking about, right? And the paper. Um, let's see this one. It's not quite as, yeah, it's still pretty, pretty wavy. So we want to flatten these out, okay? This shouldn't take long. <laughs> um, I have my iron here, and, uh, I need to turn it on, and you know, it's been so long since I've used this on with you, I'm like, how do I do this? So, let's, uh, let's find the on switch here, <laughs> and we will see a red light when we turn it on, I suppose. Ah. Oh yeah, it, or it works. It's very, I haven't used this in so long. Uh, again, uh, if you use watercolor, and these were, no, I don't know if these, these were from a pad. They were not from a block. You might still get this buckling, assuming that your watercolor block is not going to buckle. I have, I, if you use as much water as I do, you're going to get some of that waves and buck, possible buckles. So, not to worry. The next thing we need is we need, well, pillowcases in my case, because these are small paintings. And I almost gave these to Goodwill and I almost, uh, and <laughs> I gave a bunch away because I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff. But I have two that I didn't and I'm gonna keep these down here. And uh, if you are gonna do a large painting, you can use the two of them, okay? And of course, move them around on the paper, you know. 
but you'd want to protect this from getting scorched, okay? And the other thing is I don't want to wet the front because um, I don't want to move the paint. Some of these paints are staining and some are not. So some may not move, but some may actually move. The next thing I want to do is I want to wet the back really well. Okay, spray bottle, another thing you need. <laughs> I always have a spray bottle, so I just assume everybody does in their art studio. Okay, then um, I would like to kind of spread that out a little, so make sure you have a clean brush. I'm really fond of this two-inch brush, if you haven't noticed, uh, slanted two inches. Just a soft bristle brush that I didn't know was so fabulous. Um, it's a Zoltan Zabel. Again, they may not be existing anymore. And I just want to smooth that water out, okay? across the back, even it out, get it across all of the paper. Okay, and then um, we are going to protect this painting with our pillowcase. And, you know, I'm not really sure how, how thick that needs to be or not be, but it's at least protecting the pa paper. And then we will take our iron and we will run that across, okay? And that should start to smooth your painting. Uh, let's see how, you can tell how hot it is by the, uh, let's see. I'll try a little, again, I don't want it too hot, but I want it hot enough to flatten the paper out. And you can tell just by feeling the paper how flat it's gonna be, okay? Another thing you can do, which I should do afterwards, is I'll get a couple books out, okay, and we will um, put them on top of the painting so while it's drying, I'd almost forgotten about that, that's a really good thing to do too. Once I get this pretty flat, um, I'm going to just set it somewhere with a pile of books on it, <laughs> and uh, I have those nice um, Zabel books of mine that are... Um, very uh, much the size or bigger than this. You want them bigger to kind of cover over that. It's feeling pretty flat. Well, there's some parts of it that are. And, um, but the main thing I do think too with the books is it actually enhances more of the flattening out in your work. So, just kind of up and down and back and down. And, uh, certainly going to be flatter than when I started. And then let's just finish up here and uh, take that around. Put a dry, this is my dry pillowcase on it. Okay. And we'll cover it up and then I'm going to put some weight on it to further flatten it while it's drying further. Okay, I might want to make sure I've got the whole thing covered here. Get some weight on there. You can see the books I've been using in the prior videos. <laughs> All here. And uh, we'll let that set for a while. And then we'll come back and we will have a much flatter painting. <laughs> okay. I'll show you. Thank you for watching. Okay, so um, I've taken the, the books off my painting. It sat here for, I want to say, 20 minutes. And it is much flatter. Much flatter. Um, I also figured out that my iron wasn't hot enough and there was another dial to make it hotter. So I've done the second painting and uh, I can I may go back to this one. It's, it's basically smooth. There's just a slight wave to it still. Um, just a little bit. May not be noticeable in a frame. Um, it's, it's up to you how, how flat it has to be. This is pretty good, I think. It's way better than it was originally. Um, so, so there you go. I hope that that was helpful, and I hope you will join me in the next video, and um, maybe not be afraid to get so wet, because we know we can flatten those out, right? Because I want to move on to these uh, dancer paintings that I've, I'm ready to show you. Some of that I've done, and uh, 
and how to uh, draw the human form enough to get um, your figures in and then do these glorious watercolor effects, okay? So stay tuned for that video. That's coming up. It may not be uh, completely ready till the new year. It's the holiday this week. Christmas is coming. Maybe some of you are celebrating Hanukkah or other, uh, other holidays this time of year and they're all so important to us and to our family. So I wish you the most Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Kwanzaa, all the different holidays that people celebrate. And I will see you um, looking forward to the new year and to us moving on and learning more and enjoying the spirit of